Hello, lads and ladies who love League of Legends. That was an attempt at alliteration, and this is a video where I coach a Diamond 4 ADC. I think in this session I go over a ton of stuff that will be very useful to players of all skill levels, and especially those trying to escape from the grasp of the Diamond 4 monster. There will be timestamps for those of you who are interested in specific parts of the coaching, and as always, if anyone watching is interested in getting coached themselves, you are welcome to join my Discord with the link in the description. I hope you guys enjoy watching. And right, so the first thing I always ask everyone is what are your goals uh, with League? You can give me short term, you can give me long term, whatever you prefer. Uh, so I want to kind of this season, by end of season, hit like minimum D2, but hopefully master is the plan. But if I get D2 and can't quite make master, I'll be like satisfied, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, and then at end of season, uh, like this basically just kind of relates to the rank is I want to try out for something called UK EL. Um, but you kind of, I have some friends in UK EL and mm -hmm. coaches, friends who are coaches and they will basically tell me I need to be minimum D2 to try out. Cool. So that's basically the plan to get to that. So as far as champions, do you, what's your champ pool and what do you want your champ pool to be? Is what, is what I want to ask. So I kind of throw myself onto whatever's meta a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, but if I had to pick like my favorite champs and the ones I've performed best with normally, I love Kaisa, Ezreal. Um, I, Kaisa, Ezreal, Zaya are probably my three favorite ADCs. Mm -hmm. And then I'm playing a lot of MF this season just because I think it's really good. But cool. Yeah. Okay, nice. I, I see your... Uh... MF mainly recently, and the replay is also Misfortune. Um, okay, so before I talk about the goals and stuff, you go with what's meta right now, Misfortune, you like Kaiser, Ezreal. Are those your favorites, yeah? Uh, yeah, Kaiser, Ezreal, Zaya as well is one of my favorites. Cool, okay. Like, if I had to pick to just play so that one like, that one cool. worlds must have been pretty fun to watch for you <laughs> when it was literally yeah, yeah. Ezreal and Zaya only. <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> straight up yeah okay so um something i am noticing it's actually interesting uh seeing a lot of kraken on misfortune yeah because i actually was gonna because I, I like to not fully look at this stuff before i coach because I don't want to like I don't want my preconceived ideas to be the only thing I can I think of on the at the time you know. Mm -hmm. But I was gonna mention crack and misfortune can be really legit. Um, I think it's really good. Yeah. And it's very very underrated. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna ask you when do you think crack and misfortune is the build? I think. Uh, so Kraken, I think, is the better DPS item. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, I prefer Gale Force if there's stuff I very specifically have to avoid, like a right. Seraphine ultimate, a Rel, like Engage, like, uh, kind of like Engage that you can see coming. Yeah. Um, and can react to without flash because obviously you've got stuff like, uh. I'm, I'm trying to, but you know, you got those abilities you kind of have to flash because it's instant, but there's a lot of abilities you can kind of see the build up to yes. opponents engaging. You can get away with Gale Force. Right. So I think stuff like that is fine. Gragas is an example. If they have Gragas, like Gale Force isn't bad. Mm -hmm. um, but when they don't have, like, I'd say, I normally say, like, either two or more champions or one champion who's very specifically going to be targeting me, I really like Kraken because it's such high DPS. Right. And then obviously, if they're like a full team of burst, then Shield Bow is a great item and I go on yeah. like Ash and Jinx and sometimes if it's really a lot of burst. Cool. But I just, yeah, that DPS item, that d extra DPS from Kraken is so nice. Okay, like, yeah, agreed. So, um, I would say Miss Fortune is interesting because she's one of the champs that can build all three. Oh, yeah. she can actually build all three and she can also even build Eclipse. Yeah. Uh, so she can build four Mythics, really, uh, kind of which is kind of crazy. Um, yeah. I would say, given what I'm seeing recently, you're probably building Kraken a little bit too often. I think it's, in my opinion, it's a bit more niche than you're treating it as, because That's fair. you have to, 
it's worth it if you get the hits off. If you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, but th- I guarantee you there'll be a lot of situations where you'll be, like, walking up to hit. You won't be in range yet. Uh, and then, and you won't be DPSing during that time. Whereas if you had Gale Force, you'd be DPSing during the duration. Yeah. That's so, true. just another angle to look at it through is that uh, Gale Force is good defensively, yes. But I, I think it shines the most as an offensive item. Mm-hmm. But, like, not, not as in, like, you're the engage, but as in... You play the fight as you normally would. You use it defensively if you have to, but most of the t- a lot of the time you won't, and then it allows you to actually clean up the fight right after. Yeah, which is really really okay. good. Uh, whereas Kraken, there will be definitely be some situations where you uh, you're, you're kind of left behind by the mobility of the rest of the champs in the game. Yeah, which makes it tough. Uh, but yeah, I'd say front to back, Kraken is really really sick. Uh, so definitely keep it in your arsenal for sure. Um, and Immortal Shield Bow, when there's like a li- when there's a, a bit of dive on the enemy team trying to one shot you, that item is just glorious. Especially if you don't have uh, th- something that's going to peel for you. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It'll just let you survive that initial burst, and then you know. Yeah, I think I. I think you're right. I think I do tunnel on the tunnel on the DPS from cracking a little bit because there's some games. Yeah, where you just don't get to use it. Mm-hmm. And it is one of those things that feels super good. Like, yeah, you feel the Kraken when you're hitting minions, <laughs> but you don't feel Gale Force when you're hitting minions. But there's the bottom line. So it's, yeah. it's one of those things that just feels very, very nice. But sometimes it definitely won't be completely ideal. Your control wards are looking all right. It's kind of bouncing between... There's kind of two sections of games. You're either having like one or two, or you're having like eight, uh, <laughs> which is probably fine it depends how you're using them uh and you definitely need to not buy unless you actually have a good way to use them it's it's better to not buy them (laughs) oh you think so yeah so early game i think it's definitely useful to have a few if you can actually control the space with it so if you're playing um let's say you're playing red side if you're playing like up here uh, if you're playing up to this section of the lane this is all your territory, basically. Control wards are super nice. You can have one here. And if you're literally pushing up to that tower, you can even have one here. Uh, but there are some games where, like, people get into the habit of buying control wards, right? But they're playing the entire lane back here. So what happens is they'll shove one wave, they'll place a control ward here, then the enemy will push back to them, and they'll instantly just clear the control ward. So all you've done is just waste gold in that situation, right? Better. Um, yeah. And if you do find yourself with a control wood in one of these situations, the best thing to do is just place it here. Okay. Because uh, then it will actually stay there. Like, the, the way you should look at control wards is think of the word control. You have to be able to control the place that you put the ward, otherwise it's not worth to put it. Unless those obvious scenarios, like you're about to do dragon, so you just put it down to get, get the uh, vision off, to see yeah, if there yeah. are any wards. Uh, but yeah, I can't really comment that much on your, on your wards. Uh, Without actually seeing. Okay, that's that's fair. Okay, so uh, and similar to the wards, your CS seems to be pretty either really good or a little bit on the low side, but that's kind of normal depending on how the games go. Uh, yeah, there'll be a lot of games where I'll try to like maintain decent CS per min, mm-hmm. um, but like you know when like there's just constant fighting happening and you just don't. Yeah. really get the chance to collect waves in side lane because it's like a fight will happen then you do dragon then you reset and then your team wants to fight again it's just like yeah it does yeah. happen it does happen uh getting jungle camps on the way to things i i obviously don't know if you do that but that's a skill that's very useful to master knowing the yeah. right time when to do it uh also something that's changed recently that people haven't completely caught on to yet uh when you're playing uh red side there are a lot of situations if your support roams or something uh, if you can't walk up to the wave, Gromp is like just super useful to take because although before it wouldn't be ideal because you'd get low, now it gives you loads of HP and mana when you actually kill yeah. it. So it actually ends up being worth it as long as you have like, oh, okay, as long as you're not ridiculously behind, like you're at 15 minutes with Doran's Blade and a Longsword, it's it's pretty useful to take. Okay, fair, fair. Okay. Um, as far as the goals, so generally there is this, there's this rift 
in the the world of League of Legends where like you reach people reach diamond yeah. and then there's like whoa there's like two different worlds there's the diamond four <laughs> world and then there's everything above it like yeah. the promised land like Mount Everest right it's true all that stuff um and it, it's it's weird I don't it's not as much as it used to be when Diamond 5 was a thing, because that was, that was mental. <laughs> like, <laughs> Diamond 5 was like an entire D4 to D1 within Diamond 5, and then, <laughs> and then you'd, you'd promote. But now, now it's not as crazy, and also it's much nicer because you instant promote from Diamond 4 to Diamond 3. Yeah. Uh, so much, be- much better than it used to be, but people do generally find a bit of a uh, sticking point in uh, Diamond yeah. 4. It's really sad because I hit D4 this season with 60% win rate. I was mm-hmm. like 23 games uh, in terms of wins above losses. And okay, then now yeah. you can see I'm almost 50 50. Like I am stuck. Ah, uh, you, you had a drop off. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Last season I hit, I hit D3 promos three times and failed them all. And then I was like, this is the season. And yeah, it's been a mm-hmm. month, and now I feel like I'm about to drop down to plat. Okay, something I'd like to ask. Um, Go ahead. Do you check OPGGs as you're loading into the game? Like, do you check live game or something like that? I check my lobby when I'm in champ select. Mm-hmm. I don't check the overall game, yeah. because if the enemy team has a smurf and I find out about it, it might kill me. So yeah. I just prefer to leave it, and then at the end of the game, if I get hard shit on, then <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll look at it and I'll be like, ah, that right. bad, man. Okay, so I agree with that. I found a lot. I find a lot of people do that, and it, def- and it definitely doesn't help them. Um, yeah. Something I want to ask: if you, let's say, you go on a win streak and you and you're playing in the high LP of Diamond Four, and you're close to Diamond Three, right? Mm-hmm. And you're loading into the game, and you're seeing like a lot. You're playing in a mostly Diamond Three game. Uh, do you sometimes feel like the opponents are like you're like oh these, these these players are good you know uh it's just that so playing for i guess like grinding as games as i did last season and this season i realized there's like there's people who can coast kind of mm-hmm. into diamond or there's people like me who can hit diamond and then have a fall off for whatever reason mm-hmm. um so it's kind of like if someone's d3 or d2 and i'm against them or I'm, I'm not too worried because I'm kind of like, I've beaten people of that rank before, same as right. I've lost the people lower rank than me. Mm-hmm. It's like, just because they're that rank doesn't necessarily mean I should be scared okay. of that, if that makes sense. Cool. I had a whole whole thing for that potentially, but it looks like you have a decent mentality with regards to that, so that's fine. Yeah. Okay, I think cool. anyone can just win streak. I mean, like, what, Gross Goals D2 right now, right? Yeah. Well, that'd be awesome, man. Good old, good old Ali Larson. Love it. But yeah. Okay, so uh, can you see this in full screen? Yeah. Okay, so we'll get into the replay. Um, okay, so there's, you know, just briefly tell me your thoughts on this 5v5, um, uh, just the game. What are your thoughts on this game as you're loading in? Um, well, we have, uh, what's it called? In my opinion, we hard win late game team fights, mid to late game team fights. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Jin uh, can match MF pretty decently early, but I think MF Seraphine is like one of the best bot lane combos. So I felt like we should have pressure in the lane here. Right. Um, sorry. Okay. So yeah, I mean, this is it, it's a weird one. Uh, it's not that it matters that much, but there are many ways this can go late game. It's one of those comps that like on paper you're like okay kindred. Vlad, Seraphine. I mean, we should just demolish yeah, them in the late like, game, but it very much depends on how things go with uh, with Bard catching out and the combo of Yone and uh, Malphite ultis can just be pretty devastating. Yeah. So, this game, it may seem quite weird, but I would say it's probably insane edge of night game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fair. Because which whatever the first spell you get hit by generally will be what decides whether you live or die in a fight. And it lit, like, put yourself in the shoes of a Malphite player, right? Uh, how much worse does it feel when you're walking around, like, 25, 30 minutes into the game, 
like let's say around an objective and then you're looking for an ult and this misfortune just has this edge of night bubble around her yeah that's that's true it's like it, it literally cuts off so much from what this guy can do and if you think about it this is pretty much like your lose condition yeah because it's the difference between uh like let's say you have seraphine next to you malphite ulting both of you and then yone comboing it and then uh, Jin just hit it, like autoing you once and you dying or malphite ulting you and you can just walk out of it they managed to burst seraphine but that entire time you're like uh, channeling your ult on them or something like that yeah whatever it is even if you have to flash out and you're just dpsing it makes a big difference so yeah uh build paths and like build diversity is probably my one of my weakest points by far i mm -hmm. think i find like builds that i really like that i guess i do well on and i kind of tunnel onto that mm -hmm. so like yeah where you're saying edge of night like that's something i wouldn't even necessarily consider I'd just be like oh, if i need to survive i just build ga right like mm -hmm. That's, that's, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, and GA could work as well. Um, but there are certain situations where if you die, you, the rest of your team will die, and then by the time you're regened, you'll just die as well. Yeah. Um, okay. And this isn't necessarily like that, but I just find Edge of Night, relatively cheap item, give you some extra health. Misfortune specifically, the stats work really nicely on her because it's lethality and AD. It, it's just always nice on Misfortune unless they have like two, three tanks. And they only have one tank, so it's not a big of a deal. Uh, and it completely just destroys his idea of how he wants to play this game. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Being, being able to be creative with the builds, uh, I would say, is a really strong point to have as a player. And it can make an absolutely massive difference. Like, when I was, let's say, around a master tier level, um, sometimes I would... There, there were certain playstyles that I would find fun, and certain builds that I would find fun, but I knew they weren't ideal, right? Yeah. So, like, I would be a master tier level player, but if I'm playing Lucian with... Uh, I used to play Lethality Lucian, let's say. Um, and so I'm playing, like, Lethality Lucian in a game where Lethality isn't that good. Horrible. And it's just, like... Yeah, I'm a master tier level player, but if I play it constantly in games like this, I'll literally be in Diamond 4. Yeah. It doesn't matter how good the mechanics are, because I'm not going to be killing people, and I'm going to be short range, in a long range meta, etc, etc, whatever. So, build is just an absolutely massive part of the game. Uh, it can... Think about it like this, like, building the optimal second item over a suboptimal second item could literally be what be the same as you having like four kills extra or not yeah like four kills are not worth it if you have bad items <laughs> you know yeah 100 uh, so it makes That's a massive fun. difference uh, um okay so where the elise starts will make a difference but elise can do some very weird ganks anyway so you've got to be a little yeah. bit on the lookout because elise does elise things Okay. Okay, so What's up with this bad boy? Is what I must ask. Uh <laughs> Um I suppose have it. Uh I suppose I don't know. Um I use if we're not like getting invaded so I don't need to level E. Then a lot of the time I level Q to get like easy first three minions. So do you always level Q first? A lot of the time, unless it's in like a trading level one matchup where W is an okay option. Okay, legit. Ninety percent of the time, W is best level one. All right. Okay. Plus, uh, because I'll, I'll explain yeah. that section of it. Number one, you get will give a way better leash to your jungler. Because you can attack it like eight times uh, instead of five. Okay. Yeah. Fair. Uh, so Kindred starts better, and two, uh, you get level. You will get level two in a lot of matchups. With okay. Q, it's very rough, hard to get level two. You just you just don't really push hard enough. Okay. Fair. fair. Uh, on top of that, I I understand the first three minions thing, but the attack speed you get from the W is pretty much always enough. To just pop all three of them. That's fair. Um, 
and probably gonna miss one of the first three here. Anyway. Overall, it's just overall the W is just massive because you get the W and it also gives you the the passive movement speed and it allows you to just have this high attack speed and you're attacking the minions and you can just walk forward and uh, poke the enemy and then move back. Like, okay. um, that is pretty much every game you wanna you wanna have W first. Okay, so here, um, so this is this is a bit weird because it's uh, kind of starting off from a different situation than I would uh, assume with the Q, but you're in a, a double ranged matchup versus double ranged, right? Mm -hmm. And there's no reason not to contest for the level two. Would you agree? Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Okay. So normally. The way that the, the way that I would visualize this going is pretty much you you get your W up and you you uh, just you're you're trying to shove without taking like double poke let's say, mm -hmm. um, and you're just pushing it as hard as you can. And the other reason why the W is so good level one is it basically has no cooldown in the way you're going to be using it because yeah. you're not going to be using a W to chain focus on 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 Jin or Bard unless they mess up, in which case it will be worth it. You're going to be using it, and you're going to be slowly resetting the cooldown by attacking this minion, this minion, this minion, back minion, this minion. Yeah. And you keep alternating between the minions, and then you constantly have W up. And then what normally happens is you'll hit level 2 by like cycling on the W like three times and permanently having the attack speed up. Mm -hmm. And then you start zoning uh, right before you hit the level 2, and then if they mess up, also because of your W movement speed... Uh, you can hit them with the auto Q auto or something like that, or just zone them yeah. off, whatever it is. Um, okay. So that that was fine there. That was a decent reaction to the bard coming forward there. But here we're pretty much giving them level two for no reason, and also here we're we're pretty back for no reason as well. Like you're already kind of con you're conceding space and. Uh, Mm -hmm. the shove for, for kind of no reason now like it, it's okay if you're if right now you've just decided well they're going to get level two first but uh there, there's no reason that you shouldn't have uh tried to contest it in the first place if you know what i mean yeah okay yeah i get you because now you're just in a much more rough position than you would have been that's a nice cue though Cool, and there's the W. So there, there you should be looking for damage on Jin here. He's just set, he's just setting himself up to be damaged here, um, and he can't just like walk into you because Seraphine's right next to you too. So there, there's one Q. That's just a guaranteed Q on Jin there that would have already hit mm -hmm. uh, if you were looking for it. Uh, and that's something to refrain from doing as well. Okay, this is something that just feels good. Yeah. <laughs> but there, there's there's legit no point in doing it, and it's, you're just costing yourself mana. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll probably end up in a situation... With doing this, you'll probably end up in a situation where you're using all of your uh, cookies while you're, like, full HP just for the mana. Whereas you might as well get some health out of it as well and just have your key for other things, to be honest. So once again, right now, you could just be cycling your, your W and just hitting the minions and getting a slow shove back into them. Because that will allow you to do many things. Like, let's say you, you start pushing it back. Bard is low. They can't really contest you right now. Uh, once you get the, the wave shoving a bit, you can go and ward in the river. Mm -hmm. See the scuttle. You'll be able to see at least if she does take the scuttle and give your uh, kindred the info. It'll just be useful. So right there, once again, you should be fishing for cues. Like here, you, you shouldn't be here, you should be like here, and you should be looking for cues on Jin. Or potentially you could wait, you, you could make the gamble and wait, and then try and land a cue on Bard. Like rotate around and, and hit a cue on him. Because that, that's like a lane win condition. For example here, there's one. Because uh, if, if you push this guy out of lane, then what would you do? So let, let's say, in this situation, uh, instead of exactly what just happened, you hit the uh, auto attack on the minion right before, and then you queued it, and it crit him, and he's about this health, and you, mm -hmm. he has to base. What's your plan then? 
Uh, with current wave state, we can freeze it and keep Jin off. Because Correct. we can't contest 2v1. Amazing. Exactly. So, he has the base. You hit last hit this minion, and then you and Zerafine would walk forwards like this. Probably what you would do is you'd walk forward. Uh, hello? Okay. Uh, probably what you'd do is you'd walk forward. Past the wave that's around here, right? The wave's around here. Mm -hmm. You'd walk down here, zone him off, and you'd also ward this so you know he's not going to be getting the XP. So then when you have to walk back, you know exactly where Jin is the entire time, and you can literally zone him off the XP and the gold. I think I naturally play way too safe, level 1, level 2, especially. Yeah. Because I think I've had... You know when, like... Uh, you remember the bad more than you remember the good, right? Like, that's just normal yes, based yes, psychology, yes, right? For sure. It's so, like, obviously, I remember all of the games where, like, I've literally, like, almost lost the lane off of level one just from, like, trading bad and having to reset badly or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so, like, naturally, I just kind of don't want to trade level one a lot of the time. But, yeah. like, yeah, I miss a lot of opportunities because of it. Yeah. A lot of the time, you're not really looking to trade level one, though. You're just looking to push. Because yeah. the reality of the situation is... Level one, if they are constantly looking to trade, it's not like they have some wildly insane trade and you don't. And the thing about Misfortune is when you start with the W, even if they have bigger range than you, unless it's specifically an Ash, um, if they auto you, even if they have slightly more range, you're fast enough where you can always answer back the auto just because of your movement speed. And your one auto will do slightly more than theirs will. Yeah. Um, okay. and on top of that, if you're shoving the wave and they're constantly positioning to try and look to auto attack you, you will get the level two first and then you'll be able to zone them off anyway. And then the advantage will be back to you. Yeah. Uh, so misfortune is like, if you want to be playing MF, you, you kind of want to go into the game with the mindset of like, Winning lane and being oppressive in lane is one of the major objectives of the entire game is Misfortune. It's like, it's it's one of the key points that makes her worth playing. Mm -hmm. Because okay. if, I would say, if you're not going in it with the, going to the game with a kind of aggressive lane winning mindset, you might as well just play Jinx yeah. and farm it. And then you have like a guaranteed pretty decent chance win condition when you hit two items of just uh, playing back and then getting the reset and then just killing everyone or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's okay. like, it's a similar sort of thing to playing like a Draven or a Caitlyn. It's a similar thing to playing a Caitlyn and not poking, you know? Yeah. And not like Sieging Tower. It's, it's, just, it's just kind of the champ identity. It's something that you need to do if you want to get use out of the champ. And I have especially uh, experience with MF because she's the just a champ that I got my high low climbs on. Yeah. Okay. Side note: It's probably something that you already do, but when minions are low, but not low enough that a Q will kill them, just uh, auto Q them. Yeah. To so you guarantee you get the crit. I see a lot of people just Q auto, which doesn't make any sense and it doesn't work. Uh, but yeah. So yeah, this is fine. Kindred's on the scuttle. Elisa's top side. So it looks like Kindred's gonna come round. So like that was okay. Because you know the Elisa's in here, right? Yeah. But it's not a particularly one trade because of your Seraphine's positioning. And it's also one of those situations where here is probably a time where what you want to do is you want to basically get a situation where Kindred has a really easy gank. Okay. So when I'm in this situation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep playing exactly how you've been playing and let Jin attack the wave a bit. And then I'm going to answer it by not attacking the wave. Because then, he'll slowly start, the wave will get around up here, and then Kindred can just wrap around behind and get the kill easy. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense.
it's more of a situation where like uh that sort of gameplay is kind of what i wanted to see earlier <laughs> but now yeah. is actually a situation where the opposite is pretty good um also be i know you've got the cookies but still be quite careful with e usage because it's just an absolute drain on the mana on misfortune it's really insane also here if you position fine i think you can answer back because it's 2v1 Jin's not joining yeah. this so and you have your w so you can just stand here so you're not going to get queued and just answer it back with seraphine because mm -hmm. you know elise isn't there because you know the zone the whole zone of influence yeah Shtick. Okay. Okay, so that was pretty good. You did pretty much what you can do there. I would say you stayed around this area for slightly too long when you should have been kiting this way. Yeah. Because the bard queued already hit, right? So there's nothing that's that's to kind of put you in danger of walking this way anymore. Um mm -hmm. but overall, definitely the right idea. A lot of people would just completely run. But you answer the damage back, which is really, really nice. But then in this situation, number one, you want to ward this. And two, this is a win. If you look at this snapshot right here, it was a win. Yeah. Uh, but it stops being a win if you continue for too long after. Like here. Just understand when the trade's done. Yeah. But that was, you know... It still wasn't bad. But I, I like to see that that was really nice, what you did there. That cue was very, very nice. Uh, but one thing that you messed up is if you did want to continue this trade, which I I, I probably wouldn't, to be honest, mm -hmm. uh, you didn't use your E for this whole time. Okay, yeah. And you can see how like an E here could actually be pretty damn good because Jin's backing off. You put the E about here and you walk forward with the W, W, Q, auto on this guy and Seraphine can also damage him. Yeah. So you also have your heal. You're potentially looking at a kill. Here as well, another time for you to use the E. Like, he's completely disrespecting right now. Because mm -hmm. you've got E, you've got heal. But either way, this Q is very nice. Very cool. <laughs> okay. Do you know about this ward? The ward across this wall? I, I know about it. I'm, I actually am not 100% on how to do it. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll show you how to do it after this. My support here all the time. It's actually something I'm, I definitely should know by now. So right here, you can pop your pot. I probably would just to get that health advantage, but that's the disputed thing. Different coaches will say different things on that. In my opinion, it's worth it to pop, pop the pot right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's just something for you to keep in mind. There was a queue there. On the on the range yeah, minion yeah. to hit. Yeah. Um, I think because I knew he was going forward for grenade, and I was kind of mm -hmm. I was already at health disadvantage, so I didn't know if I wanted to trade yeah. more there. It's one of those situations where if Bard continued to walk forward, it would be bad, like you thought. But then Bard walked back, so you had the opportunity. Yeah. And it's a weird way of thinking about it. Like, it's not a usual use of abilities. But once you're in really in tune with MF, this is a situation where if you just walked up and tried to Q, he would realize, and you might end up even having a bad trade, or he'd just back off. But if you W just for the movement speed, right... Like a... Uh, like then you probably have enough breath. to get it. Because I think you didn't have your passive movement speed at that point. I'm not 100% yeah. sure, yeah. Um, okay, there's another Q. Nice. The bar's a bit of an inter. <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 <laughs> the he's loving these... The loving my cues, to be honest. <laughs> Making me look better than I am. <laughs> Okay, so Kindred top side now. This ward would definitely have been very useful, as you can yeah. imagine right now. It would just be very helpful. 
I think the Serra actually does it here. Because, for example, if you saw both Bard and Jin on this ward and they both walk to the dragon, what would you do? Um, but, like, you assume at least it's on dragon, but you can also assume they might portal through. If you have the ward, you know if they're going to portal through, though, right? I'm talking about right, if they walk yeah. past the ward. If they're on dragon, we can just shove the wave quickly because it's not cannon wave, and then go back to tower, get a good resale. Exactly. Perfect. That's exactly the answer I wanted to hear. Insta shoves. If you were, if, if let's say they were a dragon right now, what would your ability sequence be on the wave? Uh, e the full wave, and then use W to start clearing the wave, and Q to get like a melee plus a ranged each time it's off cooldown. Very right. cool. Okay, perfect. So, although you're answering like pretty well with with the wave related stuff, mm -hmm. would you say you actually utilize this stuff though? Sometimes I think okay. I'm very I'm a very inconsistent player, mm -hmm. um, and it's obviously easier when you're like looking at your own stuff to be like, oh, I should be doing this or I should yeah. be doing this. But when you're actually in game and you have to make the decisions like on the fly, mm -hmm. it's a lot harder to. I think that probably separates an actual like high elo person from like where I am, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I think. There'll be some games where I'll do that and I'll feel really good, but then like there'll be a lot of games as well where it's like I'm almost autopiloting and it's hard to break out of that. Right. Okay. No problem. Uh, if you're inconsistently doing it, you've passed the first hurdle of actually understanding it, and you've mm. passed the second hurdle of actually being able to execute it once. And now yeah. it's just about refinement. You, it, it's pretty good news. Like you're on the home straight right now. You just need to keep thinking about it. Okay. And eventually it'll get better and better. Okay, so... I think there's been a decent amount of stuff in this early laning phase. Um, it's... It depends what your definition of wrong is. But in a traditional definition, you haven't done that much wrong. But there's... The style of gameplay and the mindset and the kind of ideas about the lane that I can see you're having are definitely holding you back. Yeah. Long term. Um, I think you could almost, it's almost like I'm not doing anything necessarily wrong, but I'm not doing anything necessarily right that can make me carry the games. Yeah. It's like some people would say that's wrong. Like if you're in a, if you're in a, if I'm in a master game, right. And yeah. the misfortune isn't pushing, I would say that's wrong. But overall, I mean, it's, you know, it depends how you look at it. Right. Um, mm -hmm. but it's, it's more like the way that I think it will work for you is that you're not pushing your potential leads that you can just have, like that's sitting there ready to be taken. And the thing is, um, I don't know what these, what these sort of games are called, but there are some sort of like role playing games, right? Where your character has like a stat, uh, mm -hmm. and then based on that stat, you have to roll and then, like, if you get higher than, like, a four, let's say, with all your characters' multipliers, yeah, then, yeah. then you pass. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. So, right now, in these situations, because you're not, I'm assuming, because you're not constantly pushing for these advantages, right, your char your, your stat for that is relatively low, right? Yeah. You've you got, like, a three, which means that, like, even in situations where... 100% you should be able to do it, the execution might not work. Like, it probably will, but it might not. But the yeah. only way to, like, create a scenario where you're, you're always getting these advantages mechanically and you're able to pull it off is just by doing it. You just got to try and do it. And you got to understand that uh, it's going to take some L's, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So it's gonna take more risks. It's like... gonna take some L's on the way, but you've got to push yeah. push for these advantages and this uh, dominant position in lane. And sometimes you will think it's the right time to do it, and you'll realize it's not. So the most important thing is you push for the advantage, right? Mm -hmm. And if it goes well, you will try it again next time. And then if it goes well, like ten more times in a row, you're like, okay, in this situation, I could always push this advantage in this way right yeah if it goes badly then you need to think right 
did it go badly because it was the wrong decision, right? Mm -hmm. And in that case, you don't do it next time. Or did it go badly because it was the right decision, but my execution was bad? Yeah. In which case you do do it again. And you might think this, but then you actually execute it right and it still goes bad. And then, <laughs> and then you, you don't do it again. And obviously it's not this simple, but like yeah. th that, th this is pretty much boiling down the process a little bit, and which, which is why it's not one of those things that you can instantly do and it will just result in success. But long term, mm -hmm. this will result in massive success. Because like when I'm playing, for example, a misfortune lane, my, I have this massive subconscious arsenal of experience of pushing for leads in different lanes. So that doesn't, my mind doesn't go, oh, I've played this exact uh, Misfortune Seraphine versus Alistar Tristana seven times, and I know exactly how the level one goes. That's not how it goes, but that's going on in the back of my head, and what that results in is a feeling of knowing when I can push and when I can't. Yeah. And okay. yeah, although that feeling doesn't necessarily feel like you 100% know, it will develop over time and it will be based on real knowledge and you just have got to have confidence in that process basically. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm going to skip forward on the laning phase now because like, as I've tried to kind of said, the whole basis of the laning phase is what you need to work on. So I, I don't think it matters as much like yeah, what yeah. happens in the no, next okay. 10 minutes because it's like you, you kind of want to try and revamp everything from, from the base. You kind of want to okay. rebuild the base of this before moving on to the rest. Okay. Uh, so if there is anything specific later in the game that you think will be very useful, uh, let me know. If not, I'm just going to go through and see see some of your deaths and stuff. Cool. Okay, so you're level six. You're going for the Kraken, I'm assuming. Yeah. I actually... No, I might be Gale Force. Might be going Gale Force, actually. yeah. Yeah, I think I went Gale Force this game because of the bottle. Mm-hmm. Hold on. So here's Why didn't you say you were stunned there? That's so weird. Oh no. Yeah, it says it at the top. Like a little sweaty. Oh, the sweat. See, when I when I play it, it says it in what in the words. Ah, uh, right. So I thought I might have enough damage here to just like. Oh. Like, the thing. And then yeah, I I flash forward with the A click, and it ends up he goes in. Oh the, the god. Push. Okay, so. <laughs> Two th there's a few things here. There's, a f there's quite a lot of things here, right? God damn. I'm about to be slaughtered. <laughs> no, no, don't worry, don't worry. So, number one. If you are going to do this alt play, which you probably shouldn't, <laughs> you should use your E first. Got ya. Like, on Misfortune, if you have the mana to do it, if you're going to ult, you should also E in 19 out of 20 cases. Because... At the very base of it, it's more damage, right? You're going to yeah. hit him with a full E and an R instead of just an R. But more than that, most of the time what it means is you put the E down and they're slowed so they get hit by like four more alt waves which can result in like 500 more damage to like three members which is just insane when you think about it. Yeah. yeah. So you should always look to ER and you should get that into your muscle memory. Second of all, by the, like, by the time this guy's walked forward this much... Like, right now I can think, oh, maybe you're thinking this guy's going to back up, so you're just going to ult this, which is fine. But by this time, he's still gone forward. You just need to cancel the ult and E behind him and just kill this guy. Loki, in my mind, my thought was there's no way this Jin is man enough to take a whole MF ult and stay in his ulti, so he'll cancel his ulti here. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, no, the, the guy was just, like, super alpha. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, he put it all on the table. There. He was like, I don't care about 1100 damage. I'm, yeah. I'm going for that. He's good. So, But yeah, um, here is a kill on the bard. Yeah, 100%. For sure. Uh, so you obviously cancel just super late. Uh, and this is an unfortunate situation. Do you use attack move? I do, yeah. Okay. Do you find this this happen a lot, this? No, this is actually pretty rare. <laughs> but it's because <laughs> he flashed out of vision, right? As yeah. I uh, A-clicked, so... And you're comfortable with the misfortune combo, just auto, Q, auto. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. And here, this could still work 
if you E him and you just walk in and auto him. Okay, so I've noticed there's been like th three situations where you're just not using E. Yeah. When you're in a fight. So I'd say your E usage overall needs a lot of work. Because mm -hmm. the spell is a, a, it's slightly underwhelming in a lot of cases, but it actually makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. it, it's literally just damage and it's a slow. So you use your E when it wasn't that useful to use. And then you didn't use your E twice when you when it's just a combat spell and it would have made a massive difference. Um, yeah. Because what the E does, number one, in, in a very basic level, it stops them from running away from you. Because you're MF and you're fast, and they're E'd and they're slow. But mm -hmm. on top of that, in a more advanced way of looking at it, there are many situations where you're fighting where you put the E on them, and what it allows you to do is you decide if you're gonna hit that if you're gonna engage in combat or not. Because if you want, you can run and they can't hit you. But if you want, you can also hit them, and they might be able to hit you. But it gives you the choice. Yeah. Whereas if you don't E, this happens. But because of Jin's attack speed, if immediately, here, you double, you E him, and you double you, and you auto him three times, you'd get this kill. Because mm -hmm. be, you'd hit all three autos by now already. Yeah. And he'd be dead. That's fine. But anyway, that was unfortunate though. It pains it pains me to see that though. <laughs> that was that was rough for sure. It is what it is, right? It is what it is. Exactly. exactly, as a great man once said. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at this. So this is one of those situations where uh remember that pink cord I told you about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we saved we saved your ass. So something in bot lane that I like to do. There are some situations where this is not useful, so you have to use your brain for this one. It's not just like an always thing. Mm -hmm. But if you're not going to directly miss minions, pathing back to bot lane through the jungle is pretty useful. Because mm -hmm. it creates a situation, number one. I mean, obviously, you don't do this, let's say they have a rain guard that's counter jungle. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Not a good idea. But there are... I cannot tell you how many kills I have gotten. Let's do this to actually make it accurate. Where there are trades in the bot lane, right? Let's say you shove and you get a good base. Shove, shove, shove. Go to the bush, recall. You're back in base and you're walking back, right? This guy's like half HP. Or he might even be higher, but he hasn't bought his items yet. He just has Doran's Blade. So he's... Him and the support, or maybe just him, push the wave to the tower. If you if you path this way, he sees you when you're here, and he backs off. If you path this way, and you notice that he is still at tower, you can either... Because the reality is, people think that they understand the timing of when champs are going to be back, but they very rarely actually do until a very high level. Mm-hmm. Um, all they do is they actually just see them <laughs> and then they back off. So what you can do is you can walk and if the blast cone's up, you blast cone right here and you just guarantee get killed. You walk to completely cut them off. On Misfortune, what you do is you'd use the E immediately and you just literally just kill them. If it's not up, you make a judgment call on whether you'll be able to catch them here. If you're in danger by trying to catch them here or it's better to just go to lane. But it just gives you more options, right? Yeah. So that's super useful. On top of that, if you have a pink cord and you know you're in one of those lanes where you won't be able to control this bush, just, pl just plop it here or plop it here, depending uh, on, cool. on the game situation. Um, so yeah. Blast cone that's plays it. are huge. Just remember that. Right. Okay. I want to see some... Because uh, we're getting quite far in. I want to see some later fights. I'll just check this out first. Oh, this is just oh, maybe a, a Seraphine ultimate into an MF ult, so... Like, oh, that is it. rather nice. So, you could have ulted a lot earlier, though. Yeah. Because re realistically, in this situation, she's going to hit the ult, she's not, right? You know? So at least right now you should be ulting. Which would have been another dead. Bard would have died. Mm -hmm. So, certain situations on Misfortune, when... When it's the only shot for one of your teammates to use that ability to CC them, right? 
Just you need to just start the ult. Yeah. Because okay. there are certain times where if you start it, they just run out of it, right? But there are certain times like this where it's like if Seraphine is not going to use that ult, then you're going to die anyway. So you just start the ult, and and then you get the maximum damage with it. And on top of that, you just do ER. Just get super used to going pressing ER. Yeah. Because it's insane how many more kills you'll get once you uh, once you start using the E in, in combination with the R. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you do have the Gale Force, and you're out. Should be a bit suspicious of why he did use that. Maybe there's someone coming, but it looks like there's actually not. Right now, you should probably go and get Scuttle Crab. Oh, no, you had a lot of gold. That's fine. That's fine. Let's have a look at this. So this is good. This is something that people always get caught with on Misfortune. They just forget how fast you are, and you just come back to lane and you just bop them. So, so bard come from? actually in the chat because I thought uh, Bard would be roaming to top side because mm -hmm. of that fight that was happening. So right. I thought Jim would be all alone. Yeah. So here, you as soon as Bard comes through, you just have to turn on the Bard because it's two v one basically. Yeah. Uh, you can also, if you definitely can't trade back onto the Bard, you should probably just look to either look to probably just flash back here or something, in a way that you won't get instantly queued. You could also fully commit onto the gym, but that probably won't end up very well if he has flash. Uh, so the best option overall is to just uh, turn on the bard for sure. But the play is generally a good idea. That play, because you had the, you had the vision here, you know. Yeah. Okay, so you're farming. What are you going for, collector? Uh yeah. Okay, so as we said, I think edge of night would be the would be the build here. Yeah. Uh. Probably, yeah. Edge of Night for sure. Okay, that's a good E usage. She's probably gonna die. Yeah. That's rough. I think a big problem for me in a lot of my games mm -hmm. is I kinda, I feel like a passenger a lot of the time, if that makes sense. Like, mm -hmm. There's like the occasional game where like, you know, I'll go like 15 and one and carry, right? But like, that's, you know, I'm, I'm a D hard stuck D4 ADC that doesn't happen every day. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the games is like, if I win, uh, even if I play well, like there was, there's a game in like my, uh, the one before this where I went like eight and one on Kaiser, right? Yeah. Everyone on my team played well, you know, like my jungler yes. played really well, skilled every dragon, my top laner was kind of nutty. Um, and then there are games where I like, I'll lose. And it's like, you know, I could definitely play better. Yeah. I'm not playing insane. I'm just not doing anything to carry. And it's like everyone else also falls behind and we just kind of lose. I feel like a solid 80% of my games, especially since hitting D4, yeah. I, I'm i just a passenger and I'm just kind of right there to either win or lose, depending on how everyone else does. I think that's a really good uh, way of thinking about it, way of seeing it, because I understand what you mean. Uh, also on AD carry, it's important not to get caught up in these because sometimes these mean you played really well, but sometimes the, your team plays well and the kills just yeah. appear on a nice plate for you. Hundred percent. And it results. If you in open this. any of those, you'll see it's a lot of like my team just doing really well or like mm -hmm. yeah. It's, I, it's I like you definitely did do did do good good stuff, right? Guaranteed, yeah. you did good stuff in this game, but. In these situations, it's also important to not to realize that like it's not it doesn't it's not direct impact on your performance. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I think this perfectly ties up the main kind of learning point from this coaching session, which is taking those kind of how should I say it? Telling yourself we're playing to get this advantage in lane, we're playing to be lane dominant, and as far as we can, obviously, you don't, you know, not to a stupid level where when the jungle is on your side of the map you're pushing, but mm -hmm. we're playing to win this lane, we're playing to uh, either zone them off, get tower plates, 
uh, get kills, get a CS lead, get the dragons, whatever it may be, I'm going to get as much as I possibly can without dying. Then even if in certain games where you will end up dying for it and it's a learning experience, you won't be a passenger. Yeah. Because you're psychologically telling yourself that you're, you're putting the responsibility of the win on yourself and you're playing in a way that reflects that. Mm. Right? And to me, this beginning of the laning phase didn't reflect that. Yeah. It reflected you're playing the game, you are going for some good stuff when it presents itself to you, but you're not imposing your will on anything. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I get you. You're taking what's given. Like, when Bard offers himself for a Q, you take it. You know? Yeah. But you're not actively looking enough for those situations. And also for this play that I've been rewinding, the only thing that I would say is... uh, you just didn't use Gale Force, but it was actually, it, you know, this isn't one of those things where, where I have a massive coaching point to tell you, like, it is what it is. You could, you could have yeah. used Gale Force, that's pretty much it. Another way of looking at this fight, potentially, probably a better angle would be to stand here and ult this way, but I can see why you played it the way you did. It's not a big deal. Uh, just using Gale Force would have been good. But you Bloody guys, um, the... you guys should be in a, such a good spot this game. I'm quite surprised. Uh, you have yeah. three dragons. The uh, the fucking the Jin was making CS out of his ass. It was it was one thing. The man was on like 200 CS at 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I don't know. It was an interesting game. I can't actually remember. Okay, so here... I think we just started losing every fight. Mm-hmm. Here you just had a few more autos in the tank on like every target. Like there, there's the walk back when you could have killed the uh, Elise. Mm. But it, this is all like, it's easy for me to say, but we are, we are, we're talking like 0. 0.2 second margins here or less. Uh, yeah. so, so this is just something that you, you're going to slowly get better at. But the important thing is after that play, you acknowledge in your head, if I was a little bit better there, Elise would have died. That's all you yeah. need to do. I, if I just played a little bit more on the edge, Elise would have died. And then you just... We'll keep that in mind for the future. It's not something you can like instantly fix, like learning an item's cooldown or something. It's very different. Yeah. So here, you know, should have used the E right as soon as you see this guy. You should just plop the E here because his escape route's naturally going to be trying to go this way, not mm-hmm. this way. So you you just put the E here and you'd walk to try and kill him instantly yeah. because he's Yone and he's just used his E, so he has nothing. Uh, and you walk this way instead. So that would have been a Yone kill, but... It's not the end of the world. Okay. So Baron's up. This could be quite risky being bot lane here. You probably want to... If you are going to be here, you should instantly clear this and then base. Because Baron is up. Uh, pretty much at this point, you never want to be this deep bot lane on your own. And if someone's with you, it's almost worse. Because now your team's 3v5 yeah. on the Baron's side. So yeah, you, yeah. right now, at this point in the game... Way before this even, once landing phase is over, unless you're picking up a wave and there's no chance of them doing Baron, you want to be mid or top. Mm-hmm. Alright, anyway. That's really nice. So there's the Yone kill. What's the plan here, fellas? You clear it, take mid wave, very nice. We don't talk about the cannon. Yeah, no, nah, we don't. That's fine. Yeah, no. Nah. As I said, I think huge problem for me is definitely the passenger thing, which yeah, I think leads into what you're talking about. Where I'm being kind of, I suppose another way to put it is like too reactive rather than proactive within the learning phase. In a way, uh, in a way, yeah. How how should I think? I let me let me just think for a sec. This this go. Okay, so. The way that I looked at it, now this might not translate to you, potentially what I've already said is the best way for you to think about it. But Mm -hmm. what helped me with this is if there were advantages for me to take and I didn't, then it was a mistake. It was wrong. Then, Then my gameplay, although it didn't directly cause a death, 
it was still a misplay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically, every every time I'm not doing what I could be doing, it's a misplay. Uh, and viewing it like that puts more urgency on fixing it. Uh, so that, that personally helped me with that because I pretty much did the exact same process you did. Uh, and I was in a situation where I was first knocking on the door of Diamond. And when I first hit my, my when I hit my first slump, I was pretty much like having low deaths all the time. But I just felt like I wasn't an impact on the game. I was just what I was yeah. a spectator. And I would have good KDAs in the game that we won because I wouldn't really die much. And then I would pick up the kills in the team fights where my team was good. And when my team was bad, I would be, I wouldn't have enough of a lead to actually make it a win. Yeah. So we would just lose. And I, and I wouldn't play the fights forward enough for us to uh, win anyway. And I think the, the, the cause of this is a lot of the skill in AD carry is not over forcing. Like you'll see in uh, silver, gold, plat, and diamond as well, right? A lot of the AD carries will try too hard to make things happen, and their champions just that's just not what the champs do, right? Yeah. And this may sound counterintuitive to everything I've already <laughs> said, but it really is the truth. Like, you can't be playing uh, Jinx and just be fully focused. We need to get this 2v2 kill. I need to make this happen. Like, mm -hmm. how are you going to make this happen? You know, you have to get your advantages in ways that your champion actually can do. You can't make things happen out of thin air. So these players who are trying to do this, often their mechanics get pretty good because they're constantly forcing stuff compared to their, their peers. But they're constantly playing too aggressive and they end up just getting caught out. And they yeah. keep fighting and they keep almost killing, but then they die again. So part of the skill of AD carry is letting the things come to you, right? So... Mm -hmm. All of that knowledge in your climb thus far, getting to Diamond 4, there's been so much stuff telling you, okay, you have to not overforce and you have to let the the resources come to you. You have to let the kills come to you and pick them up and just snowball into a monster. That is true, right? Yeah. But it's not true to the extent that it feels like it, that like your gameplay is reflecting it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It's like that now you've gotten here by doing this and with like by your mechanics getting better and better obviously mm -hmm. but now is the point where you have to actually start uh figuring out the balancing act between letting the things come to you but also taking the leads you can take without uh flipping coins yeah okay and that that's pretty much the whole that is literally in what will separate someone from being a high diamond player and a low diamond player yeah you're a lot of the, oh, constantly sorry. ready to take it. Go on, tell me, tell me. A lot of the issue with me came from when I started learning ADC, because I was a mid lane main before, right? Mm -hmm. um, it was, I was kind of told there was like three rules to follow. Yeah. Uh, or like four rules, which is like, rule one was like, hit the closest guy. Yeah. Uh, no, don't die was rule one. Rule two was hit the closest guy, and rule three was just uh, only break rule two if it doesn't break rule one. Mm -hmm. right? And then I was always told just farm to three items hit that mid game as an adc hit the closest guy you'll carry your way to diamond and that's basically what i did last season mm -hmm. and then now i think the game's changed a lot from that point where it's like there's a lot of focus on the early game games kind of end before you hit three items a lot of the time as well now mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you're playing much this season because i know you said you quit the game right uh i'm playing like i did a i actually did a uh Little, I played Seraphine. I did a little climb to Master. Oh, that is yeah. just thing I don't like you very much. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't blame That's you. That's not. Nice. I don't blame you, but uh, Jesus, that uh, thing is that thing was crazy. But yeah. I played Seraphine. I played Trist. I played some other stuff. Uh, I also played on another account. Just I did a pretty fast, just climb to Diamond One playing normal ADs, just playing like really everything like random. I had that ability to just be like, yeah, I'm just going to climb to D1 quickly on a smurf. Why not? That's well, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because I've played, like, to a higher level than that, it's the same sort of thing as if you took a break, you'd be able to, I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll get to uh, plat, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just get this account to plat. So, you know, it's one of those things. It's like, uh, to me, double lift 
being able to climb to Challenger while just like probably watching Netflix <laughs> on his other monitor would just be like Jesus Christ, what the hell? But to him, it's like I mean, I played in I played in the world. So it is what it is. So yeah. it's all the perspective. Like what you're doing right now, what literally what you're doing right now is insanely impressive to the majority of the player base, whether they like to admit it or not. Whether whether they like to be this silver player on Reddit <laughs> saying "haha D four lol." <laughs> They'd love to be D4, so, <laughs> you yeah. know, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, yeah so that... the game has changed, to answer your question. It has, but the phenomenon that you described, where you're saying, like, those were the rules I played AD Carry by, that is like, I'm so glad you said that, because it's such a perfect way of explaining this whole Diamond 4 scenario, where it's like... Basically, you. These are really, really good points to um, get you to that point. Like, really yeah. sick fundamental ideas, right? But. Do you play chess? Uh, I don't know. Do you but know I, anything? I have about an understanding chess. of chess, yeah. Okay, perfect. So, there are chess fundamentals, right? That. Like the classic. It's like, castle your king early. Get your basic pieces out. Don't put your queen out really early, right? And that sort of stuff is all really useful and it will get you to a certain point. But to get past that point, you have to start getting an understanding of why those points were useful in the first place. And once you fully understand that, you can understand when you actually break those rules because they're not rules all the time. Yeah. Um... And then you and then you need to start actually pushing little advantages. So basically, it, it's nice because what you have is you have a you have a solid foundation of like the the basic idea, but now you need to now you need to start tweaking everything around it and in and like enhancing all of the all of the little ideas and tweaking everything to make everything better and everything run smoother. And then and then you realize it, eventually you tweak everything. And you get to higher diamond, and then at one point, what will happen is you'll realize that you've slightly lost, uh, lost track of these fundamentals that actually got you here in the first place, and you're too focused on the micro uh, pushing specific leads and all that. Yeah, and it ends up being in this cycle where where you you'll repeat these uh, these ideas, and you'll cut you'll go back to the fundamentals, and then the fundamentals will be what push you. Like, okay. if you see in my... I, I know I'm digressing here, so I'm going to give no, a little fine. bit of extra time. It's because I'm... But, but basically, if you saw my... Uh, uh, hold up. Let me just get this thing up. Is it the spreadsheet? It is the spreadsheet, indeed. I, um, I have the spreadsheet. I have a spreadsheet. Very similar. Perfect. So, if you look at this... Um, You'll actually see, look at this, pretty much what I'm telling you not to do. <laughs> and the reason for that is, the focus I had to have to get here is on all of the pushing micro-leads, pushing micro-leads, pushing micro-leads, playing on the edge, playing on the edge, to the point where I am doing it too much and I end up losing sight of what got me there in the first place. Yeah. So your situation is the exact opposite of this, <laughs> basically. Because yeah. you've you've got that you've got those fundamentals, but you're almost confining yourself too much because of them. Mm -hmm. But it's not enough anymore to win most of your games, basically. Yeah. Those pure pure fundamentals are not enough to win the games. Also, imagine if you had Edge of Night here. <laughs> yeah, true. Big Pic true. Picture a yeah. fancy Edge of Night here. Boom! You're still you're still damaging. You you could have <laughs> literally started ulting now. Yeah. And you'd still be ulting. <laughs> How glorious is that? God damn. I hate to admit when it's right, but true. It might not fully. It might. You might not have won the fight, but you can see like a, yeah. a million situations where this would make a massive difference, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just go over some random MF things. Cool, cool. Um, yeah. When I learned ADC, I was playing like a lot of like Sivir and Jinx, which I think also complemented that kind of. That style of just don't die in lane, and when it comes to team fights, you just sort mm -hmm. of win the fight by right. not dying. 
Yeah. So that that's not MF. Yeah. As well. That is that is true. But yeah. I mean Jinx only became good this patch, so mm -hmm. I might start playing her again. You've been demoted. Oh no. That's rough. Unlocking. We decayed, we decayed. It's okay, it happens. Uh, you decayed to what is not even my piece. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm surprised bad. I only decayed there, to be honest. I thought it would be much more of a decay. I haven't played, feel like I haven't played for ages. One of my friends went to hospital and uh, decayed from uh, Master Tier down to uh, Flat 1. Yeah. And yep. uh, now he's back and he's stuck in D4 as well. And oh. I keep making fun of him, just telling him, like, I told you it wasn't that easy. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Okay, so I'm just going to fast forward to my minion spawn and just show you. <laughs> I'm going to try it. Can you see this, by the way? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And then fast forward to my minion spawn and kind of like try and show you pretty much how I would view it as well as I can when there are no other champs in the game. Mm -hmm. Minions have spawned. So do you recommend I keep playing MF then? Yeah, MF's great, man, yeah. I think you should keep playing MF. I think you should play what you enjoy. And if MF's what you enjoy, you should definitely play it. I do like her. She's very different to the other ADCs I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Plus, like... She has that kind of Ash usefulness where even if she does kind of bad, her ultimate is still just yeah so good if you can land a good one. Yeah. So let's say you've leashed. I'm going to put an enemy here just for the sake of it. So you come to lane and what you do is you'd just proc the W and you just start autoing like this. Right, and then you, because of the W movement speed, you can walk forward and auto them and they can't even respond, right? Mm -hmm. And you see how fast I'm pushing this wave, right? Yeah. And then you get the level 2. And you can always look for poke because you're so fast and they're so slow. And then you get the level 2 and then obviously you just look for the, the chase or whatever. Um, I actually never thought about doing auto spacing similar to like because like auto spacing on Ash is easy for like the same reason as you slow them. With yeah. Auto attack, right? I just ne I never thought of the like basically opposite equivalent of MF. Oh, I mean it's huge on MF because you you have so much movement speed to be able to do it. It's like, yeah. Uh, you're actually sick at poking people with autos on misfortune in, in a lot of matchups. Not all of them, but in a lot. And obviously, just get used to the ER like that. Uh, obviously there's stuff like ultimate angles, like, uh, I'm sure you know this stuff, but like, you know, if there's, if there's people, you just want to ult like, uh, you just want to ult like this, you know? Yeah. So that they, if they, if they, if they try and run, they have to walk through your ult the max possible. So just get used to ER. Mm -hmm. That's something huge. And then apart from that, uh, I think it's always just useful before you load into the game to just practice autoing with your W. Because the thing that will help you load is being able to perfectly know when your W, when you get your W back. Mm -hmm. So it ends up being, uh, I think, five. Yeah, five, and then you can W again. All right, okay. If you're autoing different targets. And this is super useful if you're on the minions, and then you want to switch to a champion. Because let's say you're auto attacking the minions and you want to switch to a champ, so it's minion, 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 and then you switch to a champ, you know that you're one more auto away from being able to use your W again. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Alright, so just for the sake of it, oh that's very annoying. Unlucky. <laughs> oh god, come on now. <laughs> but anyway. With um, Kaisa, just to, just to overview, just in case this will be useful to you, um, the thing that by far gets me the most kills in lane is uh, W flashing at the right time. Yeah. Like, the if you understand the burst that Kaisa can actually do and you look at the uh, stacks that someone has, you can get someone from like 50% to zero level two with a good W flash in combination with the Q and your Halo Blades. Uh, yeah. And if you layer it with the CC of your support, they won't even be able to react to it. 
Uh, and you know how the W flash works, right? Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Where it come, where it goes to wherever you clicked, wherever you flash. So the classic thing is, there's the enemy champion here, uh, and they have their minions in front, like this. And your support CCs them. Let's say you have a Nautilus. Uh, and this is the, the enemy ADC here. Uh, what you do is you could start autoing them and then you would uh, W and then flash here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the W will hit because the W is all, most of the time what will get you the kill or not get you the kill. Mm -hmm. um, Ezreal, I honestly would love to give loads of tips for him, but he is like an enigma within himself. <laughs> Where that yeah. would be a whole other coaching session if we're going to talk about, if we're going to talk about Ezreal because that guy's but, a completely different champion to every other AD carry. Yeah, because when I was uh, trying to get like a good recording for you, right, I had like uh, two Ezreal games that I thought would be decent, but then I was like, I don't know if it would be good to do Ezreal for that reason, just because he is so different to like the other ADCs I play. Yeah, that like he might give you different things. Yeah, but, yeah. The thing when I've done Ezreal coaching sessions. They end up being really, really good if the the uh, coachy wants to main Ezreal. And if they don't, it's a bit weird because it's like, I have all this Ezreal-specific information that I can give them, but then if they're going to go and just start playing Caitlyn or something, most of that is irrelevant, so it's just a bit weird. Yeah. Uh, but the main thing with Ezreal... Ezreal session in the future. Uh, yeah, why not? The, the main thing with him is... Uh, keeping your passive to high stacks early on and understanding how yeah. strong he is level 1 level 2. Uh, being able to E-flash very well and constantly playing on the edge. If you're going to play Ezreal, you have to hit your spike and then constantly play like you're a 1v9 machine and a lot of the time you'll end up dying, but that is the only way to play him if you want to no, climb on him. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to go over this stuff. Uh, so, if you're going to play MF... Uh, you want to be, in almost all lanes, you want to be lane dominant. And this can be different situations where sometimes you won't be able to be lane dominant in the sense of pushing if they have a really oppressive level 1 and you have an Alistair or something. Obviously, you can't get level 2 first, right? Mm -hmm. But you have insane all-in if you have the Alistair. Um, yeah, yeah. So MF can play in two different ways. Well, she can play in a lot of different ways, but she works well with many different types of support, which is really, really nice. Um, mm -hmm. If it's ever possible to push for level 2, you should always push for level 2. And you should pretty much always take that W first to do so. And it's going to be a learning experience getting used to it. But just get yourself into that lane. put your pre Make your presence known and just shove the wave and be ready to uh, answer auto-attacks. Or even auto-attack the opponent when he's going to, just to auto the wave. Because you have the movement speed and you have the attack speed with your W. Enough so that you can move forward, hit them, and then move back before they can even do anything. Your goals, I want your goals to be um, to have a CS lead every game you play MF. Mm -hmm. um, kills if possible, especially in kill lanes. But I, but I want you to really have a big focus on getting, getting the first dragon. Yeah. That's, that's like a huge thing. Because I think you'll find that if you really grill yourself on making sure that your team gets the first dragon, sometimes it won't happen, don't get me wrong. But trying to make this happen will in turn make a lot of other things that are useful happen. Like, you'll yeah. try and have lane priority when you can, and you'll try and set up ganks when you can. There was that one situation with the Kindred that I'm sure will happen in other games of yours, where you should actually let them push a little bit and constantly ping. You don't seem to ping much. That is true. Uh, and that's another reason why you would feel like a a passenger potentially because you're not really making the calls if you're not pinging yeah uh, and you need, you need to just try and be the one making stuff happen because if you're not going to do it who else is going to do it mm -hmm. um Makes sense. ward over wall oh yeah the ward over the wall i'll show you that hopefully it lets me in now before I take all this knowledge into my next game, lose and then get demoted. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it can happen. But think about it. Then you've got then you've got all these uh, practice games to get back to where you were, and, and then you uh, <laughs> and then once a, you get there, you'll just be ready to rock, man. That is a glass half full mentality. That's what I'm saying. You know what? Um, play with I got the red demotion shield now. It's like so what is that? Uh, 
Have you have you ever been like Division Four of like a tier and uh, lost like a couple of games? So you get like I have. I'm if sure. If you lose enough, uh, you get an a little orange warning sign, and it says demotion shield expiring. And then oh. if you keep losing, you get a red one, which says demotion shield expiring. And the red one means if you lose like two more, you get demoted. That's scary. Yeah, and so I've got the red one now. Okay. Uh, so I'm hey. like, fuck, like, I just don't want to play now, you know? Okay, it is, hey, it is what it is. Honestly, if you get demoted, you get demoted, and you'll uh, get on the journey, and then you'll end up promoting again, and then you'll be much stronger yeah. for it. Okay, so uh, basically this little crevice in the wall here, mm -hmm. where it goes in, you have to click yourself right in there, get yourself right in there, and then this plant, this uh, rock, see there's these two lines on this rock here, yeah. You want to you want to go on this part of the rock here, and you press it, you'll send up water. Got ya. Wait. Nice. Um, let's cut Challenge the video the coach, there. The yeah. Okay, hold the line. I've done this a million <laughs> times. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Jesus. It's okay. above. Okay. No, no, no. It's here as well. That's where I normally press it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I just need to do it, do it again, just to 100% sure. So the crevice here, you walk right into the crevice, right there, and then here. Minions have okay, yeah. got ya. Okay, I literally have no idea how I didn't work the first time, but anyway. <laughs> okay, maybe we'll see it, maybe I'll see it in the replay, maybe I moved or something while learning it, but yeah. Uh, you can literally get that every single time, or if not, like, 99 out of 100 times. I'd say I pretty much do that every game, at least once when I'm red side. Um, yeah. So yeah, these are all the main points. Uh, I would say by far for the next like 50 games you play, the main focus, especially on your misfortune, will be just being lane dominant. Like, she's really, really sick in lane. Mm -hmm. In many, many, many ways. <laughs> um, so she's insane in kill lanes. Uh, she can be very lane dominant in push lanes. And do something when you, if you push and you can't... Uh, if you push and it's too dangerous to get tower plates or to uh, poke them under tower, do something with it. Even if it's just walk into river and make sure the enemy jungle's not doing drag if you don't have any wards. If you do have wards, go and ward, right? If you can pressure them, uh, pressure them under tower. If you can't pressure them under tower, then try and get autos on the tower if it's safe to do so. If you can't do any of them, then you can just reset. Question. Mm -hmm. Do you know who Mystic is? Yeah. Uh, have you seen his MF build that he's been playing in LPL and no, in I have not. in Korea? He goes, uh, what's it called? He goes Essence Reaver first into Kraken into uh, LDR. Yeah. What do you think of that as an MF main? Uh, Essence Reaver first is really good. It's very weird and it's one of those things. I was saying this to my girlfriend like a week ago. People always will think that Essence Reaver would be bad on Misfortune because she has very low base AD, so the Sheen doesn't make that much sense. But the fact that the Essence Reaver Sheen proc works off of your bonus AD as well will actually make the Sheen proc be okay damage. And on top of that, the mana regen is absolutely gorgeous, especially when you get that first. And I think Essence Reaver first is going to be seen way more on a, a ton of different champs. Yeah. Uh, just so, because the mana regen is, is so 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 nice like you, on Lucian it's going to start being a thing on Misfortune it's probably going to start on, being a thing on Ash on it's Dragon. definitely also going to start being a thing I think yeah. um, on Sivir like, as well Zaya Sivir obviously yeah. Ezreal all build it first already yeah um, so the Kraken I think is, is really good if Kraken is good and yeah. same with LDR like there'll be games where the LDR is just not doesn't make any sense uh, like if you're not against tanks and oh, if yeah, you're not yeah. against health, it's going to be trash. So in those situations you're like, I use third. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, but okay. yeah, why not? Seems cool. I like it. Uh, it will also allow you to hit really nasty Qs that they won't expect mm -hmm. because the Q will have the sheen damage. So your Q will do like double damage to the minion. So you'll one shot the minion and then it, you'll get the crit bounce true actually um so yeah okay. um if you have any questions uh, once i upload it oh yeah once i upload it i'll message you uh with the, with the link um awesome. i'll probably end up re-watching it later today or tomorrow and then potentially i'll hit you up with a message of like if i edit this down you called me uploading it uh if but when i ask 
uh, just let me know. Absolutely zero pressure, of course. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I'm on, fine with on your that at all. Like, videos um, from like you and Expense and Saber are actually like mainly the reason I was able to hit Diamond last season. So that's if, awesome, like, man. This helps other people. Then I actually, I don't know, you won't remember this, but uh, I was in your stream once, right? And I was. What was I? I was like gold three. It was last year. Oh my god! And, okay. And I hit you up uh, with like a. It was it was either a donation or it was a message in the chat, and I was like, "Yo, uh, I'm about to hit 200 games. If I hit plat four with 200 games and I'm hard stuff, I'm gonna ask you for coaching." Um, and you were like, "Yeah, sure, buddy. Like if if that's the amount of games then that you think." And then I ended up hitting plat four and ended up hitting diamond that season, so I never asked. But now I'm hard stuff, so that's why I decided to hit you up. Hey, you you went a lot longer than you thought you were gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought fair. I was gonna get stuck in low platinum and then very you know, nice grinding up the diamond. Very nice. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, uh, I'll upload um, and I'll send you the link for it. Once I upload, I I always believe with these coaching sessions, most of the time people get more from watching it back, like a few days after than they got yeah. from the initial watch. Uh, mm -hmm. As far as things to focus on, by far everything that I think you should focus on is just the early lane. Uh, pushing it, pushing waves, getting prior, hitting champions more when you can, uh, mm -hmm. and just getting the overall aggression up. There was also this one situation before we go. I don't know if I'll be able to find it. Might be here. Yeah, it was. So here, uh, I I feel like you need to have the killer mindset always, where you're always ready to, to pounce, ready mm -hmm. to kill on the first opportunity. And here, there was a, there's a kill on Elise waiting to happen here. And your movement just doesn't reflect it. Yeah. Like here, once the Elise is here, this is a kill on the Elise if you walk this way. And you need to, to have this mindset where it's like, okay, I need to not get hit by the cocoon and then just kill her. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you start that off by hitting the E and then uh, deciding on her reactions. So I, ideally, you should be around here and looking to hit the E. And then especially right now, boom, she's just fired her cocoon. You just you have a yeah. gale force onto her and a kill. Got okay. uh, but, but yeah. So just that sort of mindset is what, what I want. Uh, what what will help you? Basically. Mm -hmm. I just need to be more aggressive, take more risks. So yeah, man, uh, good luck with everything. I hope the coaching oh, yeah, session was you. useful, and I hopefully it will also be useful on the rewatch. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, man. It was really good. Like I appreciate it, man. No worries. I'll see you around, definitely, sir. Definitely everything I expected it to be when I was that gold three player. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Good stuff, man. See you later, bro. All right. Peace, bro. Bye.